So Sapphire are on the verge of releasing a brand new graphics card and by tomorrow it should be available. So let's go and check out the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6700 XT here and see what this card is capable of. So let's jump in on the specs on the Sapphire Nitro RX 6700 XT. This runs on the AMD RDNA 2 gaming architecture using the 7 nanometer process. It has a boost clock of up to 2622 MHz and a game clock of up to 2548 MHz. The card features 40 compute units and 96 MB of the all new AMD Infinity Cache and 12 GB of dedicated GDDR6. The card can handle up to 4 displays and supports 1 HDMI port 2.1 and 3 display ports at 1.4. The card requires an 8-pin and 6-pin PCI Express power cable and the recommended power supply is 650 watts. On the side of the card you have a quick access to the dual BIOS switch so if you happen to go a bit crazy and push an overclock too far you can always switch up to the backup BIOS. The Nitro Plus series has a clean black and silver colour scheme and it gives you a lot of options for a consistent design throughout your case. Of course, if you're looking to match lighting schemes as well, the Nitro Plus has you covered as it has ARGB making it really easy to sync up your designs to get the ideal look that you desire. The card's form factor will fit in most cases, the only thing to consider is it does take up three expansion slots. Sapphire have redesigned the Trix cooling solutions for the 6000 series of cards, starting with the new and improved hybrid fan blades that help increase air pressure reducing GPU and memory temperatures by around 3 degrees, while still keeping the fans nice and quiet. The 6700 XT also features Sapphire's quick fan connect that enables you to replace a fan head without having to return the card to the manufacturer for repair. We also see improvements to the brand new fin designs which lowers noise levels and as well helps airflow around the GPU to dissipate the heat more efficiently. The memory modules also see improvements with an additional heat pipe and improved thermal pads to deliver better thermal conductivity. The RDNA 2 architecture offers a bunch of exciting new features such as smart access memory or SAM for short, which works in combination with AMD's 3000 and 5000 series Ryzen processors. SAM works by utilizing the bandwidth of the PCI Express to reduce bottlenecks and increase performance by allowing full access to your GPU memory. Usually systems are limited on how much VRAM they can be used at one given time. Depending on the game, you could potentially see some rather significant performance boosts, upwards of 16% in some cases. The performance uplift is something that really varies from title to title, some games don't really have a benefit at all, but when they do, it's pretty much free performance gains. To take advantage of this feature, you'll need to be running a 6000 series Radeon GPU in combination with either a 3000 or 5000 series Ryzen processor. You may also have to make sure that your motherboard is compatible or see whether the BIOS needs an update. On the 6000 series of graphics cards, we see the introduction into ray tracing. While it is still early days for hardware accelerated ray tracing on AMD's graphics cards, the good news is, is that we get to see some rather impressive performance on AMD partner titles that are optimized for AMD implementation. Also, thanks to AMD's Fidelity FX suite, which currently offers seven different open source tools that developers can leverage in their games to improve both visuals and performance, things are looking even better. The most highly anticipated feature in this suite is unfortunately not quite ready at this time of recording this video, and that feature is Fidelity FX Suite Super Resolution. Fingers crossed it won't be much longer until it's released, and providing it lives up to the expectations, it could be quite the game changer. All we know right now is that AMD hopes to be able to take a lower resolution image and scale it up natively in order to dramatically boost performance without losing too much, if any, image quality. This feature combined with ray tracing is definitely something I'm looking forward to getting my hands on. Also included on this card is the Sapphire Trick software which can obviously be downloaded at Sapphire's website. It gives you a general overview of your card specification and lets you monitor your hardware performance. As well as that you can boost your gaming performance in the Trix Boost tab as well. If you want to learn more about that feature or how to set it up make sure to check out our Trix guide, the link will be in the description below. It's important to note that if you're looking to buy into the Nitro series or if you already have one, you get two additional options in the Sapphire Trick software. One lets you perform health checks on your fans to see if they're running up to speed and working correctly. And finally, the Nitro Glow tab that lets you set up your custom lighting schemes for your LEDs. 
The Radeon suite, which comes bundled with AMD's drivers, also offers gamers some really solid tools, such as anti-lag and boost mode, which are designed to both improve input latency and keep your mouse feeling smooth and reactive at all times. Boost mode will dramatically reduce your resolution in favor of FPS when turning your mouse from side to side, but when there's very little camera movement, your quality will sharpen back up to your native value. The anti-lag feature works best when your GPU is under consistent heavy load. In this situation, the CPU can process frames ahead of your GPU, resulting in noticeable input delay, particularly when it comes to your mouse input, which nobody wants. By enabling the Radeon anti-lag, we can prevent the CPU from getting too far ahead of the GPU, which can significantly help reduce input latency, keeping your mouse feeling nice and snappy when it counts. Let's jump into some benchmarks using Dirt 5. So in our first set of tests, we ran with smart access memory turned off, running at ultra settings, and by default in Dirt 5, ray tracing is always on. At 1080p, we got 114 frames. At 1440p, we got 90 frames. And at 4K, we got 58 frames per second. I then turned on smart access memory to see what kind of performance boost we'd get. And at 1080p, we see the biggest gains gaining an extra six frames per second. At the higher resolutions at 1440p and 4K, we only see a one or two FPS difference. The one thing that I've taken away from getting to play with these new graphics cards recently is that 1080p outside of maybe competitive gaming is feeling pretty much like a foregone conclusion at this point. Due to most modern games taxing the CPU so heavily these days, the performance difference between 1080p and 1440p on cards like the 6700 XT here is often quite small due to 1080p simply being unable to saturate your GPU in most cases. We've reached a point in many games where the frame rate difference between 1080p and 1440p is often between 0 and 20% and when you consider that you're basically getting nearly double the number of pixels at 1440p, 1440p starts to make a compelling argument. Obviously, we still got 4K to consider, but that's where I think things take a much more subjective turn, especially when you take in consideration the cost. Personally, I fall into the camp that prefers higher frame rates and higher refresh rates when compared to higher resolutions. So much so that if the performance gap between 1080p and 1440p wasn't so small, I'd have likely stuck with 1080p gaming. While yes, it is possible to find a 4K 144Hz display, these are often very expensive and to get the most out of them you're probably looking at going with something like a 6800 XT if not higher and at that point we're in a totally different price bracket to what we have here with the 6700 XT. Put simply it's my belief that gaming at 1440p on a high refresh rate free sync compatible monitor is hands down the sweet spot for PC gaming right now. Hopefully you found this overview insightful in some way. Now, as always, make sure to do your homework and research when you're looking to buy a new graphics card yourself. And uh, I hope you find the right card for you.